the current world champion Magnus Carlsen faced this game off against Andrew Tang, who is again a very famous grandmaster, who is also referred as the king of the bullet chess. And both of them had this bullet game two years back. And you'll be surprised to see the average centipon loss. But of course, I'll not reveal that to begin with. But let me take you through this game. And I hope you enjoy it. It's instructive as well. Watch the show, enjoy it, and do subscribe to the channel if you love it. Uh, and let's begin. Hey, chess lovers. Welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga, And let's start off with the game, which starts with Magnus playing d4. Now, uh, with d4, you can expect a London system kind of a setup. You can expect Levitsky or the Tromposky attack. Or what happens in the game is the Queen's Gambit, which Magnus plays, pushes up the c4 pawn now. Open responds with e6. Carlsen goes with knight to c3. So the Gambit is declined because the pawn is not captured back. If the pawn is captured, then the queen's gambit is accepted. So this is a queen's gambit declined variation. Now, in this position, Andrew responds with bishop to e7, developing the bishop, uh, the dark square bishop, maybe with the idea of putting the knight onto f6 later on and castling on the king's side. He, of course, didn't want to go with a pawn forward here and then put the bishop onto this diagonal because the bishop will not be much useful here because already Magnus has opened up the uh, the queen side. So Magnus will be castling on the king side and maybe that's what the bishop is going to be helpful as well later on in the game. So now the pawn trade happens in the center and then Magnus develops the bishop onto f4. A similar place uh, as we see in the for the bishop in the London system trying to go for the capture on c7 eventually with maybe knight going to b5 as well pressurizing this square further now the c file is also opened up so you can get the rook or the queen lined up as well and the attack will be very soon coming uh, for andrew so andrew sees the threat plays a simple move uh, c6 which also allows queen to move out later on uh, prevents any further damage uh, on to c7 because now the knight cannot come on to b5 knight cannot capture the pawn as well it's double defended now so it's a good move uh, a small way how you can uh, absolutely defy your opponent's plan and now magnus goes with e3 trying to play a london system kind of setup again uh, with the triangle here the only thing missing is the pawn on c3 which has been traded uh, and has got the knight over there now, bishop comes to f5 and Magnus responds with bishop to d3 asking for a bishop trade, which does happen. Magnus takes back with the queen and now Andrew develops the knight finally on to f6, preparing to castle on the king side. Uh, in this position, Magnus responds with a knight to e2 instead of putting it out onto f3, which is more generic of a square than, than your plan is to put it onto e5. But here Magnus had different plans. He wanted to navigate his knight maybe to g3 and then to f5 to attack the bishop, pressurize uh, the g7 as well. So there can be a lot of uh, plans here with the knight. Also, now you're fle flexible to castle on the king side or the queen side, depending where you want to. Queen side looks a bit dangerous as of now because the c file is semi-open. So some pawn pushes would eventually uh, mean that the c file is opened up completely but yes you can simply save your king by just after casting you can push the king to b1 and make sure the king is safe as well in this position uh, andrew uh, decides to castle finally and magnus castles on the king side as well because as i said this is a semi-open file there's a, only one pawn in the file knight is of course uh, cannot be can be moved anytime and then uh, the file is open for white so Ma rather Magnus decides to put the king into safety by putting it on the king's side uh, and then Andrew just develops the rook improves the position of the rook by uh, placing it on to e8 the idea is always to put the uh, rooks into the semi-open or open files uh, e file is very important is as, as it is the center as well and here Magnus plays a pawn to f3 now his idea is to prevent a move like knight to f4 uh, e4 which was always coming because if you then trade, opponent can take back with the pawn, pressurizing your queen to move. 
and you don't want to leave the square uh, for because of a pawn there and that opens up the queen file as well why do you want to get into dangers when things can be controlled in a better way so that's why f3 a solid move and also what it does is creates an escape square for the bishop as well someday if, if an attack pawn storm suddenly comes up you can simply put your bishop backwards hide and defend the pawn on e3 as well with the bishop which is already defended as of now but then you can put it uh, backwards as well and defend uh, it as well you can simply move the knight and get the rook as well onto e file which will again defend the pawn on e3 so and then you can eventually go for a pawn break yourself if you are confident enough because if you see black is lacking in development here uh, the king the rook and the knight, knight haven't moved from the queen side yet uh, so it's a passive structure for black so white is having slight advantage uh, here and in this position uh, Andrew decides to develop the other knight now uh, onto d7. Magnus now goes for the pawn break, pushing the e4 pawn. Uh, but Andrew decides not to take it and get back with the knight onto f8. The idea is to add some defenses to h7 as well. Uh, also, uh, you are clearing out the path for the queen uh, to come out eventually. Maybe you are willing to trade off the bishops. Uh, and once the trade-off happens, you can take back with the knight or the pawn. Anything is fine and things look uh, okay for Andrew here as well. So Magnus doesn't take the pawn. Uh, instead, pushes the pawn forward, which is again very nice technique because now you will have, the opponent will have to move the knight away. You have cleared the diagonal of the queen as well. Uh, you can simply put back your bishop, get the pawn up, do a rook lift, and then your attack is coming on to h7 as well with queen and the rook lining up uh, towards the same square. So here, uh, Andrew decides to put the knight onto h5. If you see, there are not much squares uh, remaining for the knight from here. If you can go back, that's again passive because your knight is not going to move uh, further ahead, but can only go back to b6 maybe. And then you are losing out the defense completely. Rather, Andrew thought, okay, let me trade off with the bishop at least, uh, one of the attackers of the king side can be taken away uh, with this trade-off. Uh, so Magnus decides against it, of course, and saves the bishop, gets the bishop backwards. And again, it's the same idea. You can now put the bishop backwards onto f2 as well, which we were discussing earlier that it can come back from g3 and then f2. But uh, Magnus chooses the other way because this saves the bishop as well as of now. Now pawn comes to uh, g6. The idea is to make a retrieval square for the knight because suddenly a pawn push forward, which is g4, will trap the knight here. So just creating an escape square for the knight, uh, which does happen anyway. g4 is played by Magnus. Andrew responds with a knight to g7. And then knight comes out onto g3. Now knight g3 is just improving the position of the knight. Nothing much. And then maybe you are planning to play uh, h4. Can be risky because bishop can take. So have to be careful with that as well. Maybe just h3 and solidify the pawn structure here. Uh, you can even push for the f pawn. Uh, and just improving the position of knight for now. Uh, so here, um, finally, Andrew places bishop onto h4, attacking the knight with the same idea so that he can remove one of the attackers. And Magnus continues pushing the pawn. Now f4 comes up. He's going ahead with his pawn army. Uh, and here Andrew uh, plays uh, f5. His idea is even if an unpassant happen, he can take back with the bishop. And if a pawn trade does happen, he's happy because at least the pawn will be stopped here. The f file will not get opened up for the attack. So Magnus takes the pawn instead. Uh, and here Andrew takes the knight with the bishop. Uh, and Magnus doesn't care what's happening here. You are losing the knight, but you're just pushing the pawn forward attacking the other knight as well opponent's knight you are just just, just see the position uh, magnus has basically cut down on every square for the opponent he has just simply pushing his pawns uh, and has taken away all the space from the opponent uh, now bishop goes back trying to save the bishop but that loses the knight of course and then your other knight is hanging so it has to be saved which can be saved by taking on the pawn with the king, which does happen. And now Magnus continues pushing the f5 pawn now. Uh, here, queen comes to d7, uh, trying to attack the pawn as well. Maybe trying to go for a trade uh, of the queens if possible. But 
but again the rook is also there there's a lot of uh, activity going on the pawn forward looks good to me as well uh, but here magnus first plays king to h1 now his idea is to maybe put the rook later on on to g1 and pressurize the square uh, g6 as well not making making sure that the opponent cannot take the pawn with the pawn but only can take with the queen because this will be pinned up uh, so here uh, andrew decides to take on the pawn himself because anyways the things were crumbling down and magnus takes with the rook now uh, and you cannot take because you lose the queen as well now knight comes on to g6 and magnus plays rook to g1 see how important it was to put the king away because then you can create more pressure on the g file these small moves in the grandmaster games are very impressive because they are very clear about the plan that they are going about and just a small king move uh, to the corner ensures the king's safety remember the opponent doesn't have the light square bishop eyeing on this diagonal so it's not a problem open has a dark square bishop which is passive not doing anything not eyeing the king uh, and the light squares are already covered up with the opponent pawns itself so if any threat has to come queen has to get on one of these light squares and then only it, it can be problematic so king h1 was completely safe and which also allowed rook to coming on to g file uh, attacking the knight as well in this position uh, andrew tang responds with a uh, rook to f8 trying to exchange the rooks and release some pressure that's always the best uh, situation where you are being pressurized you try to exchange pieces and get relieved of the pressure but magnus doesn't want to trade off he just pushes the rook on to h5 now attacking the bishop and you cannot take back because it is pinned the king is behind the knight so you cannot move so uh, here Andrew went with bishop back to d8, which is kind of strange, but didn't have much options as well. What to do? If you see the clocks as well, 24.5 seconds against 43 is kind of bad itself. Uh, and in this position, uh, Magnus sacrifices the rook, uh, takes on the pawn. Uh, Andrew, of course, took the uh, the rook for the pawn, and then queen takes on g6 is very bad because now it's kind of a mate happening anytime soon you have full control of the file uh, you have a bishop as well uh, and this looks like a very bad moment for the opponent and in this position andrew resigns now if we go back to the uh, engine evaluation as well it's just mate in three from here just in case you're wondering this can go back you give a check and if a piece can come in between doesn't matter because you take the rook and then queen can, comes in between to save and then it's checkmate so it is going to be a checkmate in three moves that's why uh andrew tang resigns and it was a good game and the best part about it it was a bullet game and look at the average centipon loss for carlson 10 zero inaccuracies uh zero blunders zero mistakes and average centipon loss of 10 in a bullet game is completely insane magnus played all the very nice moves almost all the good moves uh there must be some kind of a very small in uh inaccuracy not even inaccuracy not the best move as per the uh computer that's why the centi point loss is 10 otherwise it could have been a bit more lower but if you see he was dominating throughout it was in balance never went to black side ever and then eventually magnus crushed the opponent with the, this formidable attack attacking with the rook sacking the rook uh as well and then going for a quick checkmate i hope you enjoyed it and you uh, found it in instructive as well if you did please do subscribe to the channel as well and i shall see you tomorrow with some interesting and instructive content like always thanks for your time take care bye bye